Hello, hello. It looks like we're going to be having another great day for Alibaba and Chinese stocks. It is currently up 5.2% in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The US market hasn't opened yet, but as you'll see here, it's sitting at 89.2 HKD. Let's just quickly do the conversion in, and see what this means in terms of uh, the US market. Now, its, uh, it's um, share over here is one-eighth of the ADR, the US ADR. So what we do is uh, get uh, 89.2 over here. And then we multiply that by 8, as you'll see over here, we're getting 713 HKD. And uh, we need to multiply that by 13, by 0 0.13 to get the uh, US currency. And it's sitting at almost $93 right now, 92.7 is what the current ratio is. As you'll see here in stock tweets, there are a lot of posts, uh, there's a lot of uh, volatility it looks like. I was reading that in the last uh, six minutes we had 30% of Friday's uh, volume, pretty much, the trading volume that is. So we may be looking at uh, some insane activity today. That's interesting to see. But what happened? What is going on? Why we're getting this kind of results? You will see that Hong Kong stocks rise 3% as China relaxes some virus rules. And we know about what has been happening in China. And it looks like uh, the governor there and the Chinese uh, government pretty much are deciding to cut down on a lot of the virus nonsense and uh, go back to normalcy. At least, um, at least close to it, <laughs> probably not 100%. But that uh, obviously will tremendously help the stock, mar stock market and especially companies that have been completely battered down as uh, Alibaba is one. Now you'll see here it has jumped 3% in early trade and uh, with the Hang Seng Tank in Index uh, rising more than 5%. So we are probably looking at quite significant gains here in, uh, at least for the tech uh, companies, uh, which Alibaba is as well. Now, oil prices have risen as well, 2%, as OPEC uh, actually stuck to its policy of lowering oil production here, and China relaxed uh, some COVID rules. And uh, this is a little bit of a bad thing to see here in terms of oil, but uh, it's uh, good to see what we are having in terms of um, China and the COVID rules over here. Now, Friday stocks uh, fell, of course, but it looks like... Uh, with the Chinese uh, activity index at the lowest in six months, we may be looking for, you know, for a, for a reversal. And so it may be a, a prime opportunity to potentially, you know, take advantage of this and maybe maybe add some uh, China into in your portfolio if you haven't added yet. It may be a good idea, especially if this uh, trend continues over here with uh, uh, pretty much the, you know, the Chinese government uh, kind of allowing for people to work and, uh, you know, stopping their lockdowns and all these things. This could be super this would be super super important and um, i was taking a look earlier at uh, you know what uh, the government has been posting tweets and things of that sort and they are saying that uh, you know the the virus is not as deadly anymore and things of that sort which of course they knew months <laughs> months now but it looks like what has been happening the riots in china are, are having them shift their pretty much sentiment towards how towards how they should be reacting towards their own people now, obviously, the Chinese one will strengthen on reopening hopes here. It's something to be expected. And uh, the currency strengthened, strengthened to around 7 against the US dollar following the latest reports that signaled further loosening of China's COVID policies. It looks like one gets stronger. And uh, that's to, again, that's to be expected with, you know, with the China potentially reopening pretty much. You would expect a stronger one for sure. Now, I was taking a look at this article over here a little bit earlier, and I think it's a nice read. This was actually written yesterday, but I think it's still a nice read, especially with uh, this Monday potentially looking like a great Monday for the Chinese stock market. You will see that China has seen widespread protests in recent weeks due to its prolonged zero COVID policy. And we did see, at least um, in the, in the, on the TV, that uh, you know, people were actually burning some, uh, some camps and things of that sort. So you know, the government kind of had to do something, kind of stop this uh, insane rioting because you know, they have really, really squeezed uh, Chinese people. And the company boosted its uh, buyback authorization by 15 billion is another thing that we learned uh, about it maybe 10 days ago, something of that sort. I made a video about this one. And uh, they have also posted a decent quarter. This is another great thing. This is what I love to see, basically, because as I told you in previous videos, in many previous videos, I don't, I don't really care about what is going on with politics. This is temporary. This is always temporary. These things uh, change and shift. I care about the business a lot. And they did post a decent quarter with slight revenue growth. And remember, their economy is shut down. Like, there's no economy over there. And they, they still post slight revenue growth. That is insane. This is a fantastic business. And of course, they continue to maintain their rock solid balance sheet. So I can't even imagine what the company is going to be doing when the you know the when the economy over there fully opens, and it will happen at some point. 
Now the shares have had a, a strong run over the last month. This is probably going to be at around 40% uh, actually when the market opens uh, tomorrow. And you may think that uh, this potentially signals that we're going to have a reversal because it's up a lot, but that's not necessarily the case. You could have a couple of days or maybe even a little bit more where the market is going to be negative just because, uh, you know, institutions and uh, holders are going to be taking a breather, taking some, uh, you know, some profit out of the market. This could happen. It's not necessary, but it could happen. But the thing is, when the, when the sentiment changes, it will continue going upwards. There, go, there, there are going to be even more buyers, again, if uh, you know the sentiment gets better. And it does look like we're having a little bit of a reversal here. Now, you never know for sure, but I do think that um, you know even at the current price, Alibaba is actually pretty, pretty cheap. And even though it's up significantly, it was uh, insanely down. It was down a lot for no real reason, frankly. And so even at this price today, I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Now, as you'll see here, COVID protests are, protests are actually going pretty much uh, haywire. They, there was a yeah, quarantine ca- camp in Lanzhou, Lanzhou that was being burned down, that I, what I mentioned earlier. And um, one of the things that uh, you know, uh, makes investors avoid Chinese companies is the Chinese government. We know about this one. But the thing is, the valuation is, um, is interesting. It's the thing that you know, the balance sheet, balance sheet has uh, plenty of cash, that, that's Alibaba, little debt over here. And, uh, you know, the company had 67 billion in cash and short-term investments over here. They are a very, very rich company. And uh, again, they have been brought down because of uh, the government, the Chinese government, the government, the crackdowns, everything that has been going on in the, in the Chinese market. That was the only reason why they are down. But in terms of their business, they are very solid. solid. Their buybacks, take a look at the buybacks here. For the most recent quarter, they repurchased 24.3 million ADRs for $2.1 billion. What's a better time to do that other than now when the stock price is actually tremendously low? It's a fantastic opportunity to be buying back your own shares. And I'm pretty sure some people will regret not getting into the game later on. Not bad with a company with a current market cap of $232 billion. Imagine that, right? Company has a $232 billion market cap and they have $67, $67 billion in cash. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> okay, so yeah, recently added uh, $15 billion in, onto the buyback, extended authorization to last until uh, March 2024, 5, and till that, uh, that day, they're going to continue buying back shares over here. And uh, yeah, in terms of a conclusion, you know, the author says here that they do have uh, quite a significant amount already, so they are not looking to put any more money into Alibaba in case they are wrong about the government. There's always some risk, of course. There's definitely some risk because uh, remember, this is China and, uh, you know, anything could, could happen, frankly. But I do think that uh, they, won't, they won't really destroy their economy for a long time. This was, I think, temporary. Again, I have mentioned in the past, uh, sort of like uh, showing who the boss is. But eventually, things will have to go back to normal. And uh, these kinds of companies over here, like Alibaba, Zipeng is another one that has been getting amazing returns lately. Uh, many others, like Neo, also was like tw- up 20% or something of that sort at some point. These uh, companies that have been battered down so much, they are so insanely good value over here at a really, really cheap price that, uh, you know, they will have to go back to normal eventually. There is nobody leaving money on the table for a long while. And, uh, it could happen for a little time because of uh, some agenda, but for the long term, you know, the, I'm pretty sure this will, uh, this will come back. And again, as I mentioned earlier, I still think this is fairly cheap. And we have, uh, you know, we have examined the valuation of the company many times in, you know, using my tool over here. You can see in the metrics tab um, over here, you will see that the, the P ratio has been, uh, you know, coming up a little bit just because the net income has been affected because of the investments that the company had uh, had lost some money f- uh, on. And of course, um, you know, what is happening in the Chinese economy. So this is a temporary thing. It's because of the recent quarters, as you'll see, because previously the company was much, much lower in terms of their PE. But the price to free cash flow is uh, much, much lower and it keeps getting lower here. So, you know, with the company buying back shares and, you know, uh, pretty much growing their revenue and everything looking great, no, no debt, so much money, so much cash in the bank. This is looking like a fantastic opportunity. I just wanted to make a video here just to let you know about what is happening. Of course, if there, there are any more significant news, I will make a fresh video and let you know. But it looks like we're going to be having a pretty green day here. Can I want to... Take a look here at ZPEV over here, ZPEV, ZPEV. 
That's the, EV, that's the EV company, for which I haven't made a video yet, but I probably should at some point. <laughs> it's looking like a Tesla killer. It looks like it's, uh, it was up 15%. At some point, it was, I think, 20% uh, last Friday. But I probably need to take a little bit of a closer look at this one. I haven't yet. But thank you for watching. I'll see you uh, in the next video. As, as you'll see here, Beijing, Shenzhen, loose, more COVID rules. Looking like we're getting some nice stuff going on. Let's hope that's going to continue. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now, guys. Have an awesome week ahead of you. See ya.